So thank you very much for that uh, kind introduction. Um, so uh, I will talk uh, to you about conflict in literature and what literature exactly. So we have a corpus of uh, 150 novels from the German Romantic period and we are going to focus more on a subcorpus of 26 novels from the core Romantic period. And uh, this is a methodological approach, but I want to hint towards which kinds of conflicts could be examined in such a corpus. So if we look at secondary research, um, they talk about an increasing, uh, the increasing conflicts of modernity in that period caused by, for example, the industrialization. And for example, the, these two authors, uh, Jessing and Koenig, also say that uh, this is reflected in arts literature. So they say that there's a flight into the, the idyllic and contemplative. So you can keep uh, this in mind, but uh, as I said, I want to talk about certain method we developed or we uh, further developed. Um, and I want to show you how we adapted this method to detect conflict. So this method comes from uh, Arthur Jacobs from his SentiArt uh, project or his SentiArt toolbox and it's word embedding based sentiment analysis. So his basic idea is to take a word embedding model and calculate the average similarity of a target word to a set of emotion labels. And he does this using two label sets, so valence and arousal. And for example, to get a valence value of a word, you measure the cosine similarity between a target word and each label word. And then you subtract the average of the similarities to the negative labels from the average of the similarities to the positive labels. So with this, it's obviously possible to calculate a, an emotion value for a word, but you can also calculate average values for text units. And we, we reproduced this approach with a word-to-vec uh, word model and then calculated average values for um, verb phrases. And we chose verb phrases as we expect them to be of uh, shorter and a bit of a more manageable length than, length than for example, entire sentences. So as I said, uh, we first reproduced this approach, um, but uh, we took our label words from a simplified model of James Russell's emotion model, which you can see here on the right. And uh, I don't want to talk uh, too much about emotion, but uh, move on to conflict. And what our basic uh, idea of this whole project was to, uh, was to switch out these labels from uh, emotion extremes to conflict extremes and see um, what results we get from this uh, relatively simple operation. So we started doing this by um, taking words from a German dictionary sorted by subject groups, which is the Donsai Dictionary. And we took from this dictionary an educated selection of the words uh, around the field of conflict for the uh, upper or for the uh, yeah for the upper end of the spectrum and harmony for the lower end of the spectrum. And this resulted in a list for in a label list for high conflict of uh, to kill, misfortune, danger, fear, fright, quarrel, fight, torment, revenge, violence, weapon, and protection. And for low conflict, so the words that were from the subject area of harmony, happiness, light, pleasure, admire, beauty, and peace. So in a second uh, conflict um, approach, we also took um, labor words from an explicitly literary source. Um, we already had at hand four German short stories annotated with a conflict uh, tag set. And we weighed each annotated uh, word in regards to how often it was tagged uh, with a certain tag and then took um, the words which were most uh, tagged with one of the conflict tags for the upper end of the spectrum and we also had a tag called conflict resolution uh, which we took for the lower end of the spectrum. And this resulted in an alternative label list where the high conflict labels were apprehensive, fearful, cruel, rifle, clench, stab, knife, smash, obey and scold. And uh, the label words for low conflict, so the words that were most often uh, tagged uh, with the conflict resolution tag where comfort, rich, reassure, win, back, ask, and easy. So, um, as I said, uh, we then calculated sentiment and conflict values um, as explained previously. And here are some of the results. So, I'm gonna f we're going to first look at uh, just a single novel, and then we're going to move on to looking at values in the entire corpus. So um, here I plotted the mean conflict values um, of all of the Donsai approach uh, of all verb phrases in Klingemann's Nachtwachen von Bonaventura and to get a bit of a better overview over the values in this novel um, I applied a simple smoothing algorithm of a, a moving average uh, with a winning size of 50 and we can already see here a, a type of conflict progression. 
Um, I don't want, do not want to go too much into interpreting this progression, but I would much rather show you some example verb phrases to, for also, uh, so you can also get an idea of what verb phrases exactly can be detected or can be found with this method. So we're going to stay with the same uh, novel and looking now at the peaks, so the verb phrases in this um, novel which the second, uh, so the first conflict approach, the Donzef approach tag is most conflictual, um, are namely um, the thunder roared angrily and the priests are howling. And for the lower uh, part of the spectrum, so um, the words which were least conflictual and most harmonious, uh, some examples are wherein it is self-admired and because I only see a light sand. So um, besides looking at single novels, uh, let's now look at this entire subcorpus of the 26 novels from the core uh, romantic period. So for this, I um, calculated the average um, uh, value over all verb phrases in uh, each novel and uh, compared them. So this is also um, taking the uh, first conflict approach, so the Dornseif uh, labels. And uh, plotting this now, we can see that there seems to be an increase of conflict um, in this uh, core romantic period. And um, so, as I said, we also calculated uh, sentiment values. So this increase in conflict, interestingly, also correlates with a decrease uh, in average balance values in this corpus. So we also developed a sort of alternative approach for looking at the entire um, corpus, uh, which we did by looking at the extremes. So for this, we took uh, top and bottom 10% groups of verb phrases, so from the big data frame of all verb phrases of all um, novels in the subcorpus. We uh, sorted them after each of the value uh, and then took the top and bottom 10% verb phrases as a single group. And besides that, we also wanted uh, to get intersecting groups for the sentiment values. So uh, if you remember this um, emotion model, we wanted to look at these uh, diagonal intersections. And to look uh, at them, we uh, took the top 10%, uh, for example, of the arousal and uh, valence groups and then looked how they intersected, so which verb phrases were in both of the groups. And what we then wanted to do is uh, to measure how well each group um, or each intersecting group is represented in each novel. So we calculated the relative frequency of verb phrases from uh, each group uh, in each novel. Um, and having now these relative frequencies of uh, each group for all the novels, it is now also possible to calculate uh, conflict or harmony coefficients. And one example for such a conflict uh, coefficient uh, you can see here. So uh, we decided to take the sum of the relative frequency of verb phrases from group A and B multiplied by the relative frequency of verb phrases from the top uh, downside and top annotation approach multiplied by a thousand. And plotting this specific uh, combination uh, results in the following graph, which kind of looks, looks like what we saw previously. So also with this approach, we can see uh, an increase in conflict in the subcorpus. So that's about all the results I want to show you now. Um, so what the high-level goal is from uh, going from here is to get from a conflict heuristic to a proper method of conflict uh, detection to also consolidate how far this simple operation of just switching out label words from a sentiment uh, analysis tool um, works. And we want to do this by, um, or we are currently doing this by manually annotating um, text units and then uh, doing uh, error analysis. But we also could look further into what I call label and coefficient engineering, so looking at uh, different, um, different sets of label words. And uh, yeah, we would also be very happy to take your questions and suggestions. And one uh, last note, all the Jupyter notebooks I used to uh, do this research can already be found on GitHub. Thank you very much.